I know you guys know the drill by now, but before we get into our discussion of Critical Role, we are first going to give a recap of it. And we cut that out and host it separately as its own video for your catching up convenience. So if you happen to find yourself on just the recap video and you want to hear our full discussion on the episode, it will be linked down below. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. This is Critical Role episode 82 of Campaign 3, Rush for the Bloody Bridge. Ooh, baby, we here. Boom. So uh, the episode picks up and we've got the party sneaking toward the Malleus Key to the Bloody Bridge. Um, and as they're approaching, you know, they're obviously doing it stealthily. They basically come across this um, Aormaton warder that's patrolling around. And the rest of the defenses in this area have been distracted by the illusions, which if you'll recall, this was all part of the plan. Right. Um, we've got the illusions of like the beasts with the, the meat wagons to make it look like real blood and everything <clears throat> attacking the opposite side to buy Bell's Hell some space. Um, so Chetney decides to go invisible and kind of trek ahead into this mini encampment where there's like two tents with this, you know, again, Aormaton water patrolling. Right. <laughs> and inside the first tent, he uh, it's empty except for one single Vanguard member that seems like rather nervous. Uh, so Chetney ducks out of that one, goes to check the other one, and no one's in the other tent. So <clears throat> the gang tries to plan what to do, and this episode is full of a lot of <laughs> planning what to do. Very much. <laughs> um, so <laughs> after a bit of planning, um, the rest of the group kind of joins Chetney in the tent with the person in it. And they eventually try to, or they essentially try to deceive and intimidate this person being like, hey, why aren't you helping? Like, you need to get out there and help. Um, and the first, I think Imogen is the one that does this intimidation and doesn't roll very well. But then um, Ashton kind of steps in and adds to it and rolls well enough to that it is successful. Um, so that person takes out of the tent. They plan for a bit more. Um, <laughs> and Chetney actually puts one of the EMPs that they got from Percy on that, um, Aormaton that mm -hmm. was boarding around. So they do that, <laughs> plan a bit more and head further toward the key. And it's at this point that they run into like another set of guards, essentially. Um, I believe there are three of them <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> They, again, are struggling, deciding what to do, but essentially Chetney just takes upon, him, takes upon himself to go and attack one of these um, Rhyloran guards. Specifically, I think it's a Juggernaut. <clears throat> and right, basically, right as he does this, like drops invisibility and attacks, um, Imogen kind of comes up and changes the plan. So she comes up and basically is like, stop! And like is basically pretending that like Chetney is a bad guy and they've been chasing him kind of thing. And she uses her telekinesis to like pull Chetney up and drag him back to the group and like pretends to snap his neck. Um, and she's like, he wasn't alone. Like everyone scatter and look for the rest of these traitors or whatever. Um, and they have to make a group deception check <clears throat> and ultimately they roll pretty poorly. So this doesn't really work out. And so we have a quick initiation, uh, a quick uh, scuffle, uh, but ultimately bells hells cleans it up and continues toward the bridge. Um, they walk past, more of these defense posts and guards and are just kind of like snaking their way down. Um, and at one point, again, they're doing this all stealthily. Um, one point they walk up on some guards and they kind of overhear that um, these guards are anxious and they're worried about like getting in trouble for not helping. And one's like, yeah, should we like go help? So we appear like we're on their side or, you know, just being nervous about it. And um, they also notice that these guards are guarding a prisoner like in this, this cave. So the crew decides to come in again. They're dressed as Vanguard members. So they're trying to pretend like they're just members as well. And they're like, Hey, you know, shift change. You guys, you guys are taken out because Bell cells want to see what's up with this prisoner. Um, and the human guards buy it, but the Ray Lauren guards, not so much. So Imogen tries to make an intimidation check, uh, like as Liliana's daughter being like, you need to listen to me. Uh, but they're like, uh, Odahan outranks you and your mother. So like, no, we're not leaving. Um, so then we have another quick initiative, a quick scuffle. Um, combat goes pretty standard. Um, nothing really too important to talk about there. Uh, so they ended up defeating these Rylorans, and then they go talk to this prisoner um, who's looking very rough, by the way. So FCG starts by casting a heal on them. And we find out that this is Ishto of a Shanador. Um, and he's in his like mid to late forties, uh, white hair, tan skin. Um, we come to find out that he was part of this crew that was sent to gather information, much similar to Bell's Hells, he presumes. 
um, and he is the only one of his crew that survived. <clears throat> he says he's from Eos, and they just continue talking to him, learning what they can. Um, he does tell them that there are sigils on the ground that will turn you to stone as a defense mechanism. And they uh, ask, why did Odahan, like keep you alive? Like, what do they want from you? And he says he doesn't know. And we do get some insight checks on this. And um, Liam and Ashley both get a whisper. Um, the group ultimately decides that they're going to take him along with them and just pretend that he's their prisoner now. So they do that. Then we're heading back out toward the bridge. And that's where we go to break for the first half. Cool. Well, um, coming back from the break, uh, the party has essentially arrived like at the base of the ruins, like set out in front of this massive Malleus key uh, with the bloody bridge, uh, basically the teleporter to go to Ruidus right there in front of them. Um, there is some discussion around kind of like looking around the ruins. This was like the Tishtan excavation site. So there's like ruins everywhere. Um, and one of the first things they do is Orem is actually trying to locate Plains Rider Wren. They remember the last time they were here. And so Orem is kind of looking around being like, okay, I think I knew she was like around over here, but unfortunately uh, Matt reveals that Plains Rider Wren is nowhere to be found. Um, Chetney is also kind of looking around Around, trying to get a feel of like this base operations point um in this conversation by the way matt puts down um which i think was the third board for this episode uh this amazing board which by the way on uh the critical role um uh instagram they actually Matt actually had a cool reel about putting this board together that you can check out, but um, there's basically guards everywhere including two massive uh Aormaton warders as well in looking around, Chetney is actually going to step on one of these uh, arcane traps, which casts flesh to stone, but he makes a constitution save and resists it. Um, it they also, the party kind of like above the board is talking about like, what do we do about Ishto exactly? Because like, we weren't really planning on this guy, like going to Rudis with us. So maybe we just like use him as a diversion. And, uh, you know, I'm full on my, my spiel about Bell's Hells being, you know, somewhat evil. And they're like, yeah, maybe we should just, you know, let him be a diversion or something. They're like, well, maybe we shouldn't. Um, all that to say, uh, Imogen, they actually has this, Imogen has this brilliant idea to summon a Ray Laurent of her own because uh, they're kind of like still pretending to be uh the ruby vanguard they have ishto as like a prisoner and they're like hey if we bring in a ray lauren we'll look even more like one of everyone else so she brings in this ray lauren this feminine ray lauren and imogen actually asked the ray lauren hey are you friendly with these ray lauren that are actually down here that are part of the ruby vanguard and the ray lauren says basically no these ray lauren are part of what's called the imperium which is the first mention of that and seems to be some kind of group on Ruidus. It's around this time as well that Otahan actually appears from the Bloody Bridge, uh, along with a couple of Ray Lauren of her own, one being a Juggernaut and another one being this sort of like floating uh, spellcaster one that Matt reveals is called a Thought Eater. Uh, and then uh, did Otahan go back into the bridge or did she like run off somewhere? I think she like bounds off towards where the, the combat okay is yeah. yeah so autumn basically leaves fortunately uh, and the party they basically are like it, like we'll joke there's a lot of planning here and finally they're like let's just create as much chaos as possible um so they talk about using the emps on the warders they have a couple of actual bombs uh, and what they end up deciding to do um is uh, Imogen's going to cast Catapult on a few of the bombs. Fern's going to cast Scorching Ray, and Laudan's going to cast Fireball, and they're going to do it like on the edge of the site to kind of like draw attention over there. Uh, it's also in this conversation that Orem actually is going to step on one of the traps and fails his Constitution saving throw. But fortunately, uh, FCG has five uses of Greater Restoration and uses one of those use one of uses one of those to uh, remove that. So they all cast all these things. Um, included in this, Imogen's going to try to cast Blindness on this floating Thought Eater, uh, but fails, unfortunately, on that. Um, chaos ensues. There's three nat 20s on initiative, which is like probably the only time that'll ever happen. And it's, of course, it's like the least meaningful time that you can get three nat 20s. Um, and typically what we do in combat, by the way, if you, if you don't usually listen to our episodes, we try to just to hit like the high notes of combat just because it can last for a while. So yeah. some of these high notes, um, 
the party is trying to they don't necessarily want to go up the front stairs because there's a lot of guards near there they decide to go up like this ruined building behind the malleus key uh chetney's actually going to cast shatter on a person at the bottom of the stairs which also destroys part of those stairs um and then the thought eater which sort of is sort of like hovering over the battlefield immediately is going to um like telekinetically tell everybody like hey like look alive there's intruders here um Orem and Ishto are both going to make their way up onto this ruined building behind the Malleus Key, uh, but they both fail strength saves uh, from Psychic Slam uh, from the Thought Eater, and they both get knocked off the building, and in fact, Ishto lands on Orem uh, and has one hit point left, by the way. Um, one of the warders comes over and tries to like grab the ruined building that they're standing on to try to like rip it out of the ground, uh, but only rolls a four. Uh, and then Fern is actually going to polymorph polymorph one of the um Ray Lauren, the juggernaut, and turns it into a cute little possum that she pets for <laughs> most of the rest of the combat. Uh, also interestingly, too, by the way, um Fern and Imogen are um sort of like emanating this ruidian energy being so close to the bloody bridge and matt even mentions that fern has this interesting intermingling of this ruidous energy with her sh a shard of raushan as well um there's a bunch of ballista around the arena one of them is going to shoot ashton um but he ends up being okay and then one of the one of not a ballista but like one of the guns there is like this energy lightning gun that Chetney's actually going to jump on and shoot the thought eater with uh, and does 12 d6 worth of damage um as this all goes on it's pretty much like hey we the whole reason we're here is not to win a battle but to get up through the bloody bridge uh and fcg goes up first and basically like jumps through and makes his way up to um up to Rudus, essentially. Uh, Ishto finally gets up. Uh, Divine Smite kills one of the guards in true paladin form, uh, and then like runs away with his one hit point, basically like, trying to like pull attention. It's also around this time we get a random interruption from a bit from Sam, who had had like you know his um, his drinking flask thing, and it said like don't press this button, which Travis did, and then he got <laughs> packing corn dunked on him, and you know whatever um the thought eater tries to cast dominate person on orum uh and matt reveals that he was going to use orum to cast uh his pushing and shoving attacks to knock everyone off of this building uh but orum although he fails uses his fighter indomitable feat to reroll reroll the fail and succeeds um um and then the, the thought eater then tries to push more people off but doesn't have a doesn't work uh lot of little spider climb up she'll peace out um, Ashton's going to run up, grab Orem and basically throw Orem through the portal, does the same thing with Fern, throws Fern <laughs> through. Uh, there's an important detail that the possum too <laughs> makes it through the portal, uh, as well. And basically it's just, uh, Imogen and Chetney left and Chetney, by the way, um, on this railgun thing, one of the buildings gets knocked onto him. So he has to use half his movement to get up. He can almost make it to Imogen, who Imogen makes it over to Chetney, casts the scroll of Dimension Door, but not before having this awesome moment with Matt where the Thought Eater basically says, you know, we're going to find you wherever you go. Uh, and then Imogen says, we're going to kill you and all your friends, and then flips, flips Matt off. It's just an awesome moment. Dimension Doors goes up to the portal, and then everyone arrives. Matt describes this this gray and red landscape, uh, this arrival point with Exandria uh, encompassing three-fourths of the starry sky above them. They have arrived on Ruidus, and that is where this crazy episode came to a close. Episode 82, uh, Rush to the Bloody Bridge, I believe. Yep. Okay. Yep. It was very I'm Ron Burgundy esque. <laughs> um, and again, if you are watching just the recap, we do we do do a full episode discussion. So if you're watching just the recap, click the link in the description to see that whole discussion and let us know what you thought too. We love having conversations with you all about this. So, um, having said that.